Believe it or not, the presidential election is little more than one year away. And once again, it's looking like the role of a free press will be critical. Robert Costa is talking with a man who's been on the front lines of the information wars. We need to focus on the institution, not the individual priests. You may think you know Marty Baron from Spotlight. And show me this was systemic, that it came from the top down. The Oscar-winning film about the Boston Globe's investigation of the Catholic Church. We're going after the system. But to know the real Marty Baron is to read his new book, Collision of Power, which takes readers inside what he did after Spotlight, editing the Washington Post with billionaire Amazon founder Jeff Bezos as its owner, and with Donald Trump in the White House. What did that searing experience of covering the Catholic Church in Boston do to inform you when it came time to cover Trump? Well, uh, it informed me that we always have to confront power. We always have to hold power to account. What's it like to be back in Washington? Uh, it's a little strange. Uh, as a former reporter at The Post, I worked with Barron for years as he dealt with deadlines and challenges. Do you miss being editor of The Washington Post? Uh, no, uh, actually. Catching up with him at the National Press Club, he shared something he had long kept secret, a private dinner he, Bezos, and Post leaders had with Trump in June 2017, as Trump was growing furious with the paper's reporting. What was your first impression of Trump when you sat down with him for dinner? That he was trying to be charming, but I felt that it was a superficial charm. I felt that he would use the occasion to lean on Bezos. Uh, that was my fear all along. You're right that Trump keeps kind of elbowing you at the table. Yeah, every time I was sitting uh, to his left, and every time he said something that was negative about the, about the post, about how we were the worst and, and the way that we treated him, he would just sort of poke me with his elbow. It was clear that he was trying to send me a message. Barron came a decade ago to the Post, a paper famed for its coverage of Watergate. Bernstein got another source. The guy just is confirmed. If there's any doubt, we can run it tomorrow. You don't have to. The story's solid. We're sure of it. <laughs> okay, we go with it. But the Post was also struggling. And a year in, one of the crown jewels of journalism was sold to Jeff Bezos. When Bezos buys the paper, were you alarmed? I wouldn't say alarmed, but I was concerned. I didn't know what kind of influence he would have over our coverage. I didn't know him at all. On the other hand, I was actually hopeful because the, the post wasn't really going anywhere at that point except down. Barron often had to swat away conspiracy theories that Bezos had a hidden hand in news coverage. Trump insisted to you and to so many others, he told me once that he truly believed Bezos controlled the post. Yeah, that's what he thought. I mean, if, if Bezos were telling me what to do as a journalist, I would have quit. Um, I'm not going to do that. Was there ever a moment where you had a bit of skepticism that this guy, this billionaire, really wanted what's best for the country and what was best for the paper? I really didn't have a doubt about that. I never saw any evidence that he was using the news organization for his own personal purposes, his commercial purposes, or anything like that. Bezos, of course, was not the only figure hovering over Barron's shoulder. The number one enabler of the Democrats is the fake news media right back there. When Trump announced in 2015, a lot of people dismissed him. And look, he, immediately after his announcement, um, he commanded the support of about a third of the Republican Party. How could you ignore that? So we needed to treat him seriously as a political candidate, as a political force. And we're going to keep winning, 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 and I love you. We're For Barron, covering Trump well meant love. digging deep, not giving him a platform. I think it was terrible. I mean, I, running those entire rallies, no commentary in between, no contradiction of, of the falsehoods and lies that he was saying during those those rallies. That was a real mistake. It was free advertising for it was free advertising for Trump. Once Trump won the presidency, Barron's message to the newsroom was we're not at war. We're at work. Trump didn't buy it and began to call Barron to lash out. I keep coming back in your book to that final conversation you have on the phone with then President Trump. 
Uh, he was very critical of our coverage, and he said, you're doing this because of Amazon, you're doing this because of Bezos. So I told him that it was just completely false. I said, it's false, and you know it's false. And, uh, well, then he broke out on a bunch of profanities. He shouted at you. He shouted at me, he used profanities. He said to you, in one of his final phrases, everything the Post is doing is a big, fat lie. Right. Yeah, well, that's true. That's what he said. Um, and of course, that too is not true. We were doing our job honestly and honorably. We had an absolute obligation to uh, hold politicians to account, including the President of the United States. It's our highest obligation. That obligation extends to coverage of the upcoming presidential election. Are journalists ready for what's to come in 2024 with this presidential campaign? I'm not sure we are ready, uh, Frank. Barron's advice, uh, keep cover. working. Uh, we should talk to everybody. We, we should listen to all people. We should be generous in listening to them, hear everything they have to say. We should look at all of the evidence and do a rigorous job of reporting and then tell people what we've actually learned. Fairness also means being fair to the public, and that means telling them what we, we have found to be true.